Our psalm this morning, Psalm 150, is this full-voiced song of praise. And as I thought about what I might say, as I reflected on what this psalm might be saying to us today, I started thinking about what could inspire it. Maybe I was thinking about what uh, Trotta was thinking when he wrote the, this music. Clearly it was majestic and he had big ideas for this choral piece. But I was thinking back to those days before cell phones, as the kids so eloquently pointed out to me, when the psalmist was writing this down as a song of praise. What, what would inspire such an unequivocal song about God's glory. Maybe, maybe it was a sunset. Maybe sitting out on the plain, looking over and seeing the sun appear to dip below the horizon, inspired the psalmist to think about God's majesty and wonder and glory. Sunsets have inspired many people to write or record songs. Among them, the doors... Frank Sinatra, Marvin Gaye, the Rolling Stones, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Neil Young, the Kinks, and even Deep Purple all have songs about sunsets. Now, how many of those did you know? Yeah. <laughs> we have fun with cultural references. But Richard Strauss also wrote The Summer Solstice and had a sunset movement. Haydn's string quartet, Opus 20, is the sun. Maybe it was a beautiful morning, like this one, that inspired the psalmist. As I was walking to the church, and I knew I was going to be talking about sunsets, I thought, I should have talked about mornings, because beautiful mornings have inspired many, like Rodgers and Hammerstein. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Yeah. No, thanks. Weren't quite ahead of me as much as I thought. Maybe the psalmist saw two people care so much for their friend that they climbed onto a roof and lowered their friend down in front of somebody who they thought might help that person. And the psalmist thought, there's good. There is good in the world. Praise the Lord. Could have reflected the joy of watching children play Again, this is a bit of an anachronism, but on big trucks, big vehicles, like yesterday at Touch a Truck, when we did get to see just pure joy and happiness. And even, I hope you all got to see the little girl who had the dress on that was printed with trucks. That was fantastic. The psalmist could have seen puppies or kittens and thought, praise the Lord, I don't know what inspired this. But praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty firmament, praise him for his mighty deeds, praise him according to his surpassing greatness. I don't know what made the psalmist think and feel that way. But I wonder if the psalmist heard an incredible work of music and felt God's presence. I think we could make a case for that because verses 3 through 5 move beyond praising God in the sanctuary and start to present a litany of all of the instruments of the orchestra. Horns, strings, pipes, percussion. I thought about leaning into that part of this psalm. And as we heard each one have people planted with various instruments to burst into song, I was tempted to do that because I thought it would be fun and cool and since we have a gong here in the church, I was especially tempted to have that somewhere and have it just go really loud when it said, praise God with the symbols." I decided not to, though. I decided not to bring the cacophony of instruments because the psalm isn't just about music. It's about God and our response to God. The psalmist pours out this invitation to uninterrupted, rousing praise let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Everything. The Hebrew word here for breath invokes the creation story. And it really brings this psalm back to the story of the very beginning. When God's breath 
brought life into the world. It's a summation of why God made the world and the proper goal for everything in creation is supposed to be praise. Yet, we find so many other things to take our attention. We do it on an individual level. You know, in the midst of a beautiful morning, you know, there's still, and we've, I'm sure, all done this, found things to complain about, found something to gripe about. Then there are other things that can take us away from this awareness of God's presence and awareness of God's wonder in the world. Not everyone stops to help their friend. People hurt one another. People hurt themselves. People hurt God's creation. One commentator writes, no other use of breath could be more right and true to life than the praise of of the Lord. No other sound could better speak the gratitude of life than praise of the Lord. This psalm is a praise psalm. And sometimes, if we're being honest, we don't feel like a praise psalm. Sometimes we might even want a serious psalm, something to reflect what is happening in our life, in our world. Other times, we may even want a dirge or something angry. There are times for protest songs and times for songs with a story. But no matter what song you're carrying with you today, God still loves you. God is still with you in your song, walking along beside you, inviting you to to maybe consider looking for the things that can raise your voice in praise. Right now, we're in that post-Easter season, and that's why we decided to put this series about God's wonderful world here, because we come out of Easter with the awareness of the empty tomb and the wonder of God being capable of doing anything, including overcoming death. In this season, we can go back to think about Easter and remember our amazement at the empty tomb. And it reminds us that no matter what song we're carrying, no matter how much we've lost sight of sunsets or puppies or kittens or even beautiful music, God can overcome whatever we face. And that may not sound like much when you're in the midst of something. That that may even sound like, yeah, but I'm not experiencing that. But we come back. We come back for the reminder of who God is and what God can do. We come back and we pray and we lift our voices and we keep doing it to experience God again. Our gospel lesson reminds us not only of Jesus' healing power, but it's an illustration of compassion and action. The two friends not only brought their buddy to see Jesus the healer, they went to some extraordinary lengths to get him in. They couldn't get in because of the crowd, so they did that really cool thing that the kids have heard before. They went up on the roof and lowered him down. Praise God for people who care for one another. Praise God for friends who stop. Praise God for someone who didn't walk by the man on the stretcher, but stopped, listened to him, and tried to help. Praise God for goodness and manifest in action. Praise God for people who like to be with one another, people who lift one another up in prayer, people who encourage one another. Praise God for all of the wonder and beauty that Larry shared when he looked at the world through his eyes and saw it was wonderful. Praise God for reminders of good, of truth, of beauty. Praise God for you who are here today and are listening and thinking and maybe even joining in that invitation to praise God. You may not feel like it. Even with beautiful sunsets, people who love us, people who love and care for their neighbor, the song of Psalm 150 might feel distant. When it feels like 
Our prayers go no further than the ceiling. We lift them up to God and they sort of bounce around. It doesn't mean God has abandoned us. When we feel like every cry we utter to the divine just bounces right back, God is still here. Psalm 150 reflects this songwriter remembering God is here. It's both the music and the message. And the message isn't mindless. It's not a praise of a distant God who who just leaves us to fend for ourselves. God transcends the barriers we create between us and other people. We see this whenever we see people show kindness, when we see people stop, when we see people live out their calling. We see it when we see people reconcile with one another. We see it when two friends help their buddy get to the healer. We see it when peace reigns and violence ends. God breaks down the barriers we build between us and nature when we go outside when we enjoy the beauty all around us, and when we record it in photos and share it with others, we see God at work. It's a testimony of creation. And when we care for creation, our praise has meaning. When the psalmist sings, let everything that breathes praise the Lord, the walls between us and our neighbors and between us and creation come tumbling down. The love of God can overcome the darkest moments on earth. Earlier in the Psalms, in 139, we hear this explicit assurance of God's everlasting presence, no matter where we are. Even as the darkness, even the darkness is not dark to you, the night is as bright as day, for the darkness is as light. When we think we're alone, when we feel like God has left the building, we can hear a praise song like Psalm 150 as a reminder that God is here. God loves us and has no intention of abandoning us. Psalm 150 isn't happy clappy or vacuous. It doesn't insinuate that all life is roses and rainbows. It's a reminder that this is God's world. Praise God in the firmament suggests that this is the space between heaven and earth. It's that thin spot where the two touch. Psalm 150 prompts us to remember everything God has done. From the amazing things like coral reefs and mountain ranges or the pictures, again, that Larry shared. Praise him for his mighty deeds. It's a reminder of everything from those majestic things like mountains to even the silly things like creating a platypus. The mighty deeds reminds us of the healing story of Jesus and the Bible's endless reminders to love one another. God's mighty deeds points to everything ever done. So, I still don't know what inspired Psalm 150. But it's an invitation to join the song. So when you look around and you see God's presence, you can break forth and praise the Lord with all of your breath and everything you have. Amen.